For April the 8th, 2016, we talk about Feria, the Baldur's Gate attacks, and we ask you which free-to-play games you give money to. Welcome to Level 145. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games here on the eve of Dark Souls 3. Uh, <gasps> I guess not so much the eve. Uh, I mean, for, 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 you know, it is the week before Dark Souls 3 comes out here in America. Um, or at least it comes out publicly for people who aren't going to hack the system. That's so, so messed up. You're but... in the better hemisphere. <laughs> I feel like Dark Souls deserves a week-long eve that feels about right. I, I, I suppose, yes. A weave? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome to Dark Souls Weave. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but no, we're, we're we're just here. I'm just kind of you know twiddling my thumbs, biding my time, uh, not looking at anything on the internet ever. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a bad thing to do. Uh, you know, especially when you're in the line of work that I'm in. Um, <laughs> but, I know it's. Near enough to election season, I feel like that's actually kind of good for your mental health. I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and by near enough, you mean eight months away. <laughs> yeah. Which in America is super near for yeah, some. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> near, near every day. But yeah, no, I just uh, just super busy clearing the decks for that, and you know we've got a bunch of cool stuff happening across the network. But uh, but yeah, anybody have any uh, anything have any uh, anything going on? I got to play with an Arduino board over the weekend. That Ooh. was fun. Did you nice. make, did you make something? You did, did people I, speak to you? I, I might be confused on what this is. <laughs> it's just like a programmable like <laughs> board, like a microcontroller. So it lets you, you channel sure dead makers. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can do stuff like measure temperature or make LED disco patterns. I don't know. Yeah. Have you ever gone on their, uh, their website and looked at all the like the kits they make for it so i got one of the starter kits from the website so that's what i'm working off of but it's like the very very big beginner kit yeah is this like the kitty coding platform that like you, you plug like blocks in and it actually controls a robot uh yeah it's similar they call it like a breadboard and it's like a pre-made uh kind of circuit system setup so that you can kind of plug and play but so. it's like uh it's a full full computer like it, it runs linux we uh we used it to like run a database at work yeah a probably it's... small database but yeah, yeah very, like <laughs> like uh it basically we used it for like a stock room okay yeah. cool it's a uh, correct me if i'm wrong but the internet of things is here is that correct yes. all right yeah. um is uh, uh is the, the amount of data that we have to deal with growing day by day yeah um, or will, will companies that can't adapt to this fall behind and lose sure. out on competitive business sure. results? Okay. Is this a pitch or something? No, no. I'm just, I'm, I'm just asking if the internet what are of things is here. Cloud. Cloud. Say cloud. Say it. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't finish. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> so, well, that's cool. Uh, I got to play. So it's it's Arduino. Yeah, it's Italian. Okay, I, I I always read it like back on Lifehacker when I read Lifehacker and oh God two two thousand six. Uh, I always read it as uh, Arduino. Oh, yeah. Most yeah. people have heard it. Yeah, Arduino. Okay, yeah. It's just one of those things. I never heard anybody say it out loud until very recently. Mm -hmm. You say Hermione, I say Hermione. <laughs> I think I said Hermione Hermione. Yeah, I don't think uh, anyone real? got that right the first time around. Until, until the movies, yeah. Oh, well. But yeah, we've got the uh, the usual kind of show for you here. We've got the brief, the multiplayer, and the grind. Uh, so let's get started with... The brief. The brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Does anybody want to volunteer to go first? Yeah, I'll jump in. Go ahead. Um, with, a, with a game that's been off the radar for a while, God of War. And uh, there was some leak, leaked concept art recently that makes it look like um, since Kratos has run out of gods in his religion, he's going to jump over to Norse gods. <laughs> and, uh, and I assume start wrecking shop, um, which, uh, which is a really 
interesting way to potentially reboot the series. So these these are leaked images um, that I guess the were kind of gotten slightly um, below board, like it was someone hacked into a site, someone's <clears throat> protected images, blah blah blah. Um, but what they show is a character that shares a lot of resemblances to Kratos, um, holding an axe and sporting a beard, and uh, headed to several Norse locations. Um, I guess there are like all these Norse realms that were referenced, um, presumably to go kill some gods. Um, so yeah, this is, you know, the, the series has been kind of dead um, since 2014. Um, and even then, that was God of War Ascension, which was hot garbage. So the, the last <laughs> was that the PSP real... game? Um, no, it was it was a PS3 game, but you played as like not a God of War oh. or something. There was like a multiplayer aspect to it, and weird. It was yeah, it was free on PlayStation Plus, and I just it was bad, really bad. Um, but yeah, so the, the last proper God of War game was God of War 3, to my mind, which was way back towards the early yeah. years of, of PlayStation 3. Like yeah. you know, any any further back from that, and you're on you're on PlayStation 2. So it's it's been a it's been a minute. Yeah. Um and this this just seems like a really creative and interesting way to reboot the series. Um what I'd love to see them do is instead of like trying to do any kind of continuation, just start over. Um you can use Kratos' name, that's fine, but do the story with Norse gods. I mean, you hmm. don't have to do anything more than that. I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. And after he kills every everyone there, like we find out that this is a pre like a like a prequel to Bioshock where there are no gods, <laughs> no kings, only men. <laughs> yeah. What do you no, think Chris's Norse name would be? It lots of umlauts in it no matter what. It's Kratos <laughs> just with umlauts over the A. Over every letter, yeah. Kratos. Kratos. Yeah. Yeah. I think it I, I think it made him sound like the Swedish chef. Which makes <laughs> sense with those knives. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, you know, God of War fundamentally, you know, from from the button pressing aspect is a lot of fun to play. Mm -hmm. But it's it's so played out in terms of story that this could be the best thing that that could theoretically happen to it. Hmm. Um I wouldn't I wouldn't even look for them to do a bunch of modifications to the combat. Um I you know just given given a fresh setting I think can carry it a long, long way yeah. on uh, on gameplay that is already rock solid. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. So we'll see if any of this actually comes to fruition. Um, there's been no official comment on it since it's kind of this ill gotten yeah, like, leak, a, like but, real uh, kind of like gray kind of thing. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's pretty cool. I I, I dig some Norse mythology. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, um, and it'd be pretty cool to uh, to see that represented because usually usually you just kind of get it through stuff that uh, that that is really inspired by like Lord of the Rings. Yeah, or like, Skyrim. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like I mean, there's, there's a lot more Norse also. vibe kind of stuff out there than there is actual Norse mythology. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like Dark Souls. Dark Souls has that. Yeah. Not to, again, not to be a caricature <laughs> of myself. <laughs> Wait, you like, like this game? There's a game about to come out that is on your mind. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. <laughs> yeah. I'm curious how they're going to do this without having it come across like, uh, I don't know. When I, when I think of God of War applied to anything but Greece, I think of either Dante's Inferno or weirdly when like Norse stuff is involved, I think of like uh, Two Human. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not yeah. familiar with Two Human. Uh, that was the last game that Dennis Dyack was allowed to make. Um, oh yeah. That uh, it was it was it was 360. It was kind of a Diablo like, but it had like this futuristic uh, Norse kind of story. And um, they oh gosh, they recalled it and they pulled it from basically every service. Uh, because of the fact that he didn't really have a license to use Unreal, uh, and uh, so so yeah, yeah like gotcha. they, yeah, like yeah. The, it was it was all of kind of like really questionable legality, um, the creation of that game. So, oh, hmm. um, Banner Saga is a game that is very very Norse. Yeah, yeah. See, I feel like this one's a little weird because like, I I know like with. Uh... Ragnarok and everything, like randomly killing all the Norse gods, like Norse mythology's kind of already got that taken care of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that maybe you play that's that's Kratos's uh uh Norse name. No, Ragnarok. Done. Yep, there we go. Ship it. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I, I maybe just it's the name of, of his sword. It's the name of his sword. Like it's like Final Fantasy. I feel like maybe create like a new 
hero for the Norse game. Maybe one with personality this time. <laughs> His personality is just anger. That's not a personality. <laughs> that you can't just an say emotion. a word and have it be a personality. <laughs> he is sad. Sad Kratos. Mm. Bad Kratos. Bad. This is the weirdest children's book. <laughs> <laughs> the many moods of Kratos. <laughs> <laughs> or just, you know, make more Devil May Cry games. Oh, I'd take that. I mean, it's they're, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah different, although, hey, Hellblade is looking really good. And that's a, is that Ninja Theory's new game? It is. Oh, yes. that's the one that like is a is a very thinly veiled follow up to Heavenly Sword, right? Yes, and it also is in attempting to take on like mental health issues in a in a meaningful way. Oh wow, that seems strange for a character action game. Yeah, but uh, the, the everything that I've seen about it so far has been very positive. Like yeah. the people have the right mindset about it and. Um, are putting out something really quality. So they can do uh, like they can definitely do some pathos. Like they like look at Enslaved Odyssey of the West. Like that's a that is a good oh, story. They made that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. They do good stuff. Like, I mean, I don't know if that's... I can think of a bad Ninja Theory game. Uh, you didn't really like DMC though, did you? No, that was Jala. I love. I dislike oh, okay. DMC. Well, I disliked the gameplay of DMC. I loved the visual style and what I saw of the story. Oh, that's that's the exact opposite from what I usually hear. Oh, well, no. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I'll go ahead with mine. Uh, so this is really strange. Almost 20 years later, um, Baldur's Gate got uh, an expansion pack, and I had no idea that uh, that this was even in the works. So imagine my surprise, not only to get yeah. that, not only to get that uh, uh, um, email from GOG saying, hey, the uh, uh, the Siege of Dragonspear is, is is now available available for you, you're, you're ready to go. But then almost immediately get stories about people being shitheads. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, like, normally? Or, or uh, like, I mean, in it's, a special way? It's, it's pretty much par for the course. So here's, here's the deal. Uh, the game has a trans character. Um, there is a, there's a cleric that you meet. He has a strange name and part of the dialogue tree just goes into like, oh, that's a, that's a weird name. Where's that come from? Wait, it's Baldur's Gate. How can anyone possibly have a weird name? Well, here, (laughs) here, here's, here's the thing, right? In my game about dragons and, you know, crazy gods and stuff like that, I can't have something unrealistic like a trans person there. Um, I'm going to get to that though. But this, uh, but the, but this, but this cleric says, uh, something along the lines of, yep, I was, I was born one way and over time decided that wasn't how I wanted to be. So I have a new name to, make me feel like myself cool here we go right just uh just throwing that in there is just part of the fiction bioware has done that even recently like as far as like a uh, dragon dragon age inquisition like it's just mm-hmm. a little nod to inclusivity it's a little nod to just like hey here's some representation what have you is this uh, person in the original game or is it just in the expansion no it's just in the expansion huh. um and so q the uh the internet shit brigade uh bombing this game's reviews uh with uh basically what what appears to be from a template like you know uh, saying i'm not homophobic i'm not transphobic blah 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 and then you know stuff that's incredibly transphobic (laughs) saying why are you why are you shoving this sjw stuff down my throat etc etc and on down the line uh panning this game oftentimes saying i I haven't played this but you know they (laughs) this uh this this creator this again a woman who wrote this uh is is going in and you know messing with this beloved game and these people deserve to suffer because you know so and so and so on and this and, isn't i'm going to clarify this isn't retrofitting a character from the original game right this, this is, is the, just... the, this is not a revelation about oh, any people. character that people have a uh, an attachment to it is just them taking <laughs> you know this character and giving them a trait that really really upsets folks who uh, one review that I read said, I, I play games to get away from this stuff. To get away from what, sir? Oh, you, you don't just have a ton of trans people beating down your door constantly? <laughs> it's so annoying. It like, <sighs> I, it's hard for me to even get out of my driveway. Yeah. So, like, I don't even know what there is to say about this because, like, I just got really angry and just the the the, the fact that over the course of like twenty four hours, uh, this this eruption happened so soon after uh, after uh, what's her name uh, was fired from uh, for, from Nintendo. God, I really oh did. yeah yeah that was yeah weird. 
yeah, uh, again, super gross. Like Nintendo just negotiating with terrorists about this awful, awful stuff. And it's like, uh, yeah. And the, now the same people who are doing this are talking about, okay, we're going to go after the person who wrote this expansion next. Like the, <laughs> the, the, the crazy, like just movement that just kind of like picks these people out and single-handedly launches the cam- these campaigns is now turning their eye of Sauron onto this person. And like, it just makes me really sad. I think that gives them more power than they actually have though. Like the, yeah. the unfortunate reality is, you know, there is, there is a constant stream of shitty people doing shitty things mm-hmm. in the world. And it tends to get a lot more press than any of the good stuff that happens. But True. That's, that's beside the point that, you know, you can feed yourself for days on horrible things happening. Mm-hmm. It just, it just sucks because like it is down to the individual level. Like if it was, if it was just people saying, I'm, I'm really angry that, you know, I have to think about the fact that trans people exist, you know, in this, in this, again, escapist fantasy where eyeball orbs shoot petrifying lasers at you. Right. Um, you know, if, if it was just people doing that, it would be, it would be terrible, but like I could kind of just be like, yeah, well, people are going to be shitty. But the fact that it's turning into campaigns against these individual women is just really upsetting to me. Yeah, yeah. that's unfortunate. Yeah. I don't know. So just figured people should be aware of that. That is the that that is the most recent version of it. It gives them more so, power uh, than they already than than they actually have. But like you know, this the, the, this kind of thing is like an ampl- amplification for shitty ideas. You know. So uh, yeah, have you gotten a chance to play the expansion at all? No, no, I haven't. Um, which is which sucks because like it just came out like a day ago, and yeah. and here's the weird thing, right? You know, the like the, they're hiding behind the you know this notion that like oh the game has bugs or you know such and such. Like okay, well yeah, <laughs> let those reviews bubble up to the top. Like if there are actual quality problems with this, that's what I want to hear about. And, you know, it is like the the, the the tenth most upsetting thing about this. The tenth the tenth or maybe the fiftieth most upsetting thing about this is that like the fact you know, when when these kind of things get rolling up, it takes over the narrative for it and it actually like obscures everything else about it. So the the score becomes less about the game and more about how okay are trans people on a yes. scale of zero to ten. Yeah. Bleh. I don't know. Yeah, that's but, yeah. unfortunate. I haven't gotten a chance to play it. It's super cool. That <laughs> this is like again, it's been like it's been twenty years. I kind of wonder. Um, I wonder if I can, uh, if that's like available on iPad or something, because that'd be a pretty good thing to do there. See, hmm. I, I kind of want. Can can our uh, uh, multiplayer next week be like what what game that's at least twenty years old uh, should get an expansion or something? Ooh, oh, I yeah. like that. Yeah, done. Do it. Put it on the list. Dennis, I, hope I, I just love that this is like I I love that like this in Duke Nukem Forever. There's there's now no longer a legitimate reason to lose hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that the well, sequel or that the sequel will be good. Well, Duke okay, is a Duke Nukem Forever may hope. be a little bit of lost hope. Man, oh man, we did uh, Duke Nukem Forever. The, that's that's incredibly timely, David, because we uh, we did Duke Nukem Forever for Abject Suffering this week. Oh. And uh, oh. holy shit, it's bad. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just boring and evil. <laughs> evil, evil in what way? Uh, misogynist, an incredibly oh. cavalier attitude. Not just like the. Uh, it, it goes beyond just like 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 a power fantasy, and it gets yeah, to yeah. like why would anybody? What, what kind of sick person would have this as a fantasy? Huh. Yeah. Is it do you like think does it, sorry, this probably like let's rehash abject suffering? Do you do you do you think it goes beyond the? The source material? I, I I don't know. Like, <laughs> what do you mean by beyond the source material? Like, like I, I honestly, I've I've never played a Duke Nukem game. Mm-hmm. Like, was is I I, well, I, guess, I guess it, there's kind of, kind of me point. like yeah. two questions. Like, one is it is it more so than like the originals? And then I'd also wonder like. I, I feel like this this was always going to be a game that was like stupid and edgy, but is it? But ideally, I would have hoped it was like stupid and edgy with a little bit of like understanding that society's advanced. Does that make sense? Absolutely, no awareness. The society has like like has advanced. Um, okay, okay, imagine imagine the kind of um, 
bitter alienated teenager that would have really loved the original Duke Nukem games. <laughs> and now imagine that teenager has had 20 years to get more bitter and more alienated. And that's Duke Nukem forever. Yeah. I liked the original Duke Nukem games, but I was like eight when I played them. Yeah, so. Duke, Duke Nukem 3D. Is a, it, 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 it was and continues to be an all right game like this. <laughs> there, there, there are particular scenes in this that are just so lazy and so just like again like cavalier about things like sexual assault and just ah, just it's just gross from head to head to toe go listen to the episode uh, if you're listening to this and i'm being very inarticulate because like all of that all of that definitely rises up but suffice to say like it, you know it kind of doesn't matter if it exceeds the source material it still continues and says like hey this is this is acceptable and sure, also sure. not 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 just hey this is acceptable but this is funny this is the height of humor and wit or saying what everybody's thinking kind of stuff and it's like uh, i don't know that anybody's thinking that right now <laughs> uh, there's no self-awareness and maybe uh, Maybe eight year olds like love it to death and it like has kept that torch burning, yeah. maybe. It's also really boring. <laughs> we talk about that in the episode too. <sighs> I'm in a mood today, guys. Is that, is that a, <laughs> uh a uh oh um same people that made uh aliens, colonial marines or whatever? It's it's a uh, what gearbox. It's yeah, uh the, yeah. it's it's a border borderlands people. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's really weird that like they make like is is that like part of their business thing? It's just like buying crap games and and, and uh, then finishing them crappily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I I I I I know. I I think it's just I I think it's proof that clearly they have found a way to like siphon talent off of raw games directly <laughs> into the Borderlands series. <laughs> They're just dismantling them for parts. Yes. Yeah, but usually when you do that, you don't like put them on the road. <laughs> you yeah, know, <laughs> uh, David, you got a story for us? Actually, I'm going to need a little bit of uh, help with this one because I've never actually played um, oh Mass Effect Two. Okay, but apparently, uh, oh, the Donald Trump has um ordered several tweets to be removed. Apparently, due to um, or apparently EA ordered several. Uh, tweets to be removed after he uh, retweeted a um, fan video. Not maybe not fan video. I don't know. It's something video uh, uh, that uh, spliced up his uh, "Make America Great" theme with um, the voice of a character from uh, Mass Effect Two, apparently called the Elusive Man. <laughs> Yes. Uh, Which the, the... I guess the problem being that the elusive man is uh, in Mass Effect 2 is blatantly racist. The uh, the elusive man in Mass Effect 2, he's a leader of an organization called Cerberus, which is uh, a, oh, hum okay. a human uh, supremacist organization that you end up working for because they revive Shepard um, in, uh, after a disaster at the beginning of 2. And uh, he or she... Uh, is uh, kind of indebted to them but okay. yes he he is very much like humanity needs to be protected at all costs from these you know from the filthy others wait so so mass effect 2 is basically the eight million dollar man plus racism yes <laughs> just, just, just like mass effect 1 is uh is is a retelling of the iraq war or the uh the the, the lead up to the iraq war hmm. huh yeah did, did i did i mischaracterize the elusive man ben I, I mean, I would like to jump in and say the elusive man is very pro-human, but I wouldn't say that he's like, uh, like close-minded and like tunnel-visioned and like racist necessarily. He's just he's not he's not just like an over-the-top caricature that's just unfathomably racist. That's Donald Trump. Um, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, they, they, they soften Cerberus from one to two. Like in one, they were straight up like terrorists. In two, it's like it's a little bit more kind of like pragmatic. Um, mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> and it, it's a little bit probably a problem problematic too because like Cerberus is kind of right about the pending uh, the pending problems uh, that are that are facing the entire um, kind of universe. But uh, but yeah, like regardless, it's not really somebody that you want putting words into an actual human's mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so luckily, you know, 
apparently they didn't. Just Donald Trump. <laughs> yep. Well, no, uh, Donald Trump then retweeted it because apparently he will retweet anything. This it, it, we are. Do we know whether or not he can like he he does his own Twitter profile? Like I'm sure there's canned tweets, but <sighs> the crazy shit that comes out can only be because he's got the reins to it, and no one is brave enough to tell him no. There's no filter. Yeah, it's it. Of of all the social media presences, this is the one that feels most like he is just firing from the hip. And you know, just yeah. saying what everybody's thinking. Am I right? Anyone? Uh, <laughs> I, I, can we get some then, like cricket sound effects? There? <laughs> not <laughs> no, even as a joke. Unfortunately, there's not. There's all too yeah. many. Yeah, um, and not 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 even as a joke. No, no. But like, yeah, I, like this this absolutely has to be that. And like, Twitter has been like this. This is probably the most that Twitter is the the biggest role that Twitter has played so far in any kind of election ever. Because like Donald Trump will just straight up retweet white supremacists. <laughs> So as as a side note, I I do want to say because I a little bit misspoke at the beginning. Um, it sounds like EA um asked um Twitter to take it down. So I don't want to give the impression that you know Twitter was getting involved yeah. in politics on one side or the other. Right, right. It was EA going in and saying, yeah, we don't, we we absolutely don't want our monster being uh, um tied up with this monster. Yeah, I was worried when I read the headline because that's what I thought it was going to be. But yeah, this is completely different. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah that's uh kind of uh kind of weird. So. <laughs> huh. Um. And then Ben, round us out. Let's talk about good decisions, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is pretty depressing. I mean, <laughs> let's talk about. I'm, happy I'm in a things. I'm in a mood, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm dragging us down. So I'm talking about the game Adrift. I kind of want to play it, but I also don't want to buy like an Oculus or anything like that. So that's where I'm at. I think you can play it on just a flat screen. Like you don't need to, uh, but like, you know, are you getting the full experience, et cetera? I just want to make sure you knew like that the experience was not contingent on Oculus. I need to like get a roommate that has an Oculus and then Mm. play that, you know, that's how I want to do it. But anyway, um, the story is about uh, the Adrift team. One of the things that they did with the game is that they added a tourist mode to the game. Um, so the premise of the game is that you are lost in space. You're kind of, or you're lost in a space station rather, uh, and you are floating around, and you have limited oxygen, and you're trying to get back to Earth. It's kind of like Gravity, the video game. It's like um, a, it's like an exploration survival kind of thing. That's yeah, kind of horrifying. Yeah, yeah. Um, so one of the things that the team found when they were doing playtesting was that a lot of the players uh, wanted to just explore in the game. They didn't want to focus. One of the main focuses of the game is to get oxygen because you're constantly running out of oxygen at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, so they added a secondary mode to the game where after you beat a level, you can go back and do it on tourist mode where you have full oxygen. You don't have to worry about that. And you can basically just float around and look around, mm. which sounds awesome. You know, it's yeah. like you get to simulate being an astronaut. So, uh, but yeah, that's all the story is basically, but it's, (laughs) but it's a good example of, uh, of game developers listening to players once and trying to implement that into the game, um, and not like shoehorning it in. Um, and then also it kind of brings up a, an idea that if, if these games become more mainstream, that might be something that might have to occur in more games where, you have these kind of secondary modes where you can actually explore the environments uh, if you have an Oculus or Vive. Yeah. So I'm I'm a little uh, I I I saw just like a blurb of a headline that was something along the lines of like why why every VR game should have a, a tourist mode or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I guess what I'm not following is why like that that's fine like that that sounds like a great idea, but like. Why, why not every, you know, pretty game have, like, I, I guess I don't get what it is about VR that makes tourist mode particularly, uh, you know, particularly timely. You know, you know what I'm saying? Do, do, yeah, do yeah. you mind if I, if I, if I throw in with that? I, I got a response too, but yes, you yeah. can jump in and I'll follow up. So I think it's probably twofold. I think that there are a lot of people who are kind of like, they, they want to, for for them the experience at least at first is going to be about that immersion like they okay. want a low stakes way to I just kind of like gape slack jawed at this pretty and amazing new thing that is sure. you know different from anything they've seen before i could see another case um that kind of and this comparison's a bit of a stretch but think about mist 
right? Like Myst 1993, not the first game to use a mouse, but it was the best selling game um, of all time up until The Sims came out. Um, and it is feasible that this incredibly pretty game was also a lot of people's first exposure to controlling a, a computer game with a mouse, right? Okay. And so here is this beautiful, low stakes way to get used to interacting with the game in a new, in, a, in kind of a new light with a new, with, you know, with this new method. I could see it being smart, especially in these early days, for developers to kind of uh, take the uh, <laughs> to basically to, like to put up the put up the bumpers, right? Sure. You know, remove the ability for people to bowl gutter balls, just so that you know people can just kind of like bask in this until until we get over the uh, get over the hump. Because like, <laughs> picture uh, you know your first experience in this incredibly immersive thing being sucked out of a hull breach into space and looking at the uh, the big blue marble beneath you, and then a timer ticking down. Like that's a panic attack in a box. See, and <laughs> that's actually the thing I was kind of wondering is like. There's a lot of there's a lot of game worlds I would like to experience in VR that I would never play in VR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if, see yeah. any horror game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What what was your what was your answer going to be then? Uh, yeah. So I was going to say yeah. This is very much dependent upon the the VR like experience. Like so, I had a limited experience with this in a coffee shop that's nearby where uh they just had a, a 360 video of them donating shoes to this place in Africa hmm. but they but you could look like all around and you could ex, you know like completely take in the entire environment and but what was interesting is since you know you're wherever you're facing is the camera you're missing something at any point in time too mm-hmm. and so like it seems really nice to have this sort of mode to it where you can like fully explore the environment like multiple times in every angle and yeah, as you, I think you said it pretty well too. It's a very low stakes environment to do it in too. So, yeah. yeah, I think that so the you know the the missing something at any given point has been a problem as long as people have had control of the camera. Mm-hmm. Um, so that that one, I think yeah, that's part of the rationale. I don't think it's new to to VR. In fact, I would say a big part of the push for this is that it is the new shiny. I'm sure there were people who wanted. Um, you know, stuff when, when, you know, HD TVs became a big thing, wanted to have videos they could watch just to see everything in crystal clear, you know, resolution. Yeah. So I think, I think part of it is just, you know, wanting more ways to play with the new shiny. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I agree with the sentiment that, Hey, this is probably something that's relatively easy to do for any game. Oh yep. yeah. Yeah, I mean, what is it like? If if the developer can't do it, the like modders can as well. There's that mod for the PC version of uh, Alien Isolation that takes all the uh, the aliens out. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. So it's just <laughs> that, like that does not go on my list of game environments that I'm just dying to explore. That's really detailed. <laughs> like everything that I've seen about it makes that sound like a good way to uh, to get the environmental storytelling. Well, mm-hmm. is it also like my my understanding is I've I've never seen any of the aliens movies, but my my understanding is that like it's it has enough detail that you if you were like a big fan of the movie, it, it could very well be something you'd want to see even if you had no desire to play the game. Yeah, like all of the clutter is fan service, is my yeah. understanding. Uh, I see. But. Yeah, it, I'd say it's similar to like Chronicles of Riddick in as ter- in terms of like quality of presentation. God, that was a good game. Mm-hmm. I love I love how I love how the the uh, scope of the podcast on VR has been like our first story was like how we all think VR is kind of lame, and then like every week since then has been a story about VR doing something awesome. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I think like well, what was it I said last week? You know, when people were giving us the uh, the ability to blink certain things out of existence, I said, "Yeah, VR probably isn't that because there's still cool stuff that could happen with it." Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But I mm-hmm. really, I really want um, super hot uh, mm. on uh, VR. That'd be really good. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer. Dennis, what is the question that you asked the nice people for this listener participation portion of the show? For this listener participation part of the show, um, I asked the nice people about free-to-play games, um, which we love to hate on, but they've got to be getting their money from somewhere. So uh, the question is, have you ever actually thrown real money at a free-to-play game? And in retrospect, are you happy with your purchase? Yeah. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started here with uh, Sean, who writes in saying, I've been resistant to giving all of my phone games money. Um, I, I have been tempted to, uh, to get a leg up, but as soon as I am about to click the send money button, uh, and get the confirm prompt, I get cold feet and then often move off to play a new clicker. P.S. The music in Doomsday Clicker is really cute and catchy. Um, I will go and check that out. Yeah, that cold, (laughs) the cold feet. I think that, (laughs) I wonder if like that confirm purchase thing, like, like, you know, there has to be stats on how many people that scares away. Oh, like, like yeah. if it was just like press this button and it's going to automatically be deducted from your account, like the uh, the version of like Amazon one click. Yeah, right. I know. I know. I mean, this is exactly the same, but I know Steam gets so much more non-confirmed money from me. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think about the about the purchasing workflow. Like you add stuff to your cart and then abandon it. Uh, just uh, think of it like Regis Philbin. Final answer. Oh, yeah. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> walks off the shoe <laughs> that'd be great a million dollar question and someone's just like well uh you know you're right i don't want to play and just leaves a thump i was about to knock over my microphone but it is attached to a spring arm on my desk wait wait did did it like spring up and hit you in the face no like no it, it wouldn't even like I, I can't i can't knock this down i think all i could do is take this and maybe bump it into no i can't even bump it into the table it is wow. too well suspended <laughs> <laughs> microphones wobble but they i'm like fall imagine down. this being like the the drop the mic equivalent of like this sketch where the guy tries to like overturn the table and it's bolted <laughs> to the floor yeah <laughs> i okay so i imagine a scenario in which cole literally drops the mic and then it's just followed by five minutes of oh no oh no <laughs> oh god oh, this, oh, this god. thing cost 350 dollars <laughs> what was i thinking oh god no, <laughs> no sure, sure sm7b is a tank don't worry guys we're good let's add some more hosts on the show then yeah let's do it um (laughs) we don't have enough over talk (laughs) i edit that out don't worry mostly (laughs) mostly uh let's see here david what does robert say robert says i've given kingdom of loathing about 100 dollars over the years and worth every penny yeah i yeah that's i still feel really guilty actually never bought anything in kingdom of loathing yeah, I'll tell Zach about that. You've bought Farmville credits. How horrible a person are you? <laughs> no, no it's you... Uh, honestly, it's uh, it's been the thing where like I I have no I have no ability to understand the uh, meta game, and so like I never <laughs> realize I want something mm-hmm. until after it's uh oh, it's already it's it's already kind of fallen out of favor. Yeah, or like yeah, after you know, because uh, I guess. For people who haven't played it, like most, most of the uh, there's basically uh, one one item each month that's like a new item they've created that's usually uh, usually not like overpowered, but is uh, you know allows is in some way special. Mm-hmm. And and I I'm generally not smart enough to figure out what that way is <laughs> until the month is already over. Oh gosh, and and then then it's gone forever. Yeah. So yeah. I need to get back into Kingdom of Loathing and probably actually spend money. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Do it. I um, need to spend more money. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Go for it. You only live once. Um, <laughs> that's right. I've gone back to saying it all out loud. Uh, you know, it, did, it didn't sound douchey at all when you said it that way. I know, right? It's true. Yeah. Words. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, ben, what does Phil say? I recently just put a little money into Marvel Heroes in order to buy a couple characters uh it was buy one get one random hero free i've also put a little money into heroes of the storm and planet side 2 normally if i'm at a point where i'm putting in money into a game i like the game enough and have spent enough time with it uh with the game to warrant giving the developers a little money for their effort that seems fair that's an attitude that i can get behind actually yeah. i've yeah. played this for a long time and it, it makes sense that you get a little bit of money out of me even if i don't actually use the yeah. thing that I it's bought. not a purchase it's a donation yeah 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 that makes sense what is marvel heroes it's their uh know. it's their mmo uh but kind of kind of it's it's thing is as opposed to uh whatever dc universe online or wherever where you create your own hero mm-hmm. you basically play as well i guess as this kind of implies you play as one of their heroes okay they have so many that they can support one for each person on earth. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, like that—that that was 
one of the big complaints with it I saw is apparently you'd have like, uh, you'd have um, you know, get in pickup groups where every single person is the Hulk, which granted <laughs> to me sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, but everyone gets I would really watch angry. That movie. Yeah. yeah, every group has five Wolverines. I mean, even City of Heroes only has four. Come on, this is egregious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for I think my favorite, uh, my favorite um, city, city of heroes. This this will make semi sense. City of heroes uh, costume was when I got in a group with someone whose character's name was like Wolverine or Nightcrawler or something like that, who wasn't just cloning the <laughs> character. <laughs> Like, actually looked nothing like them, didn't have that power set, like, just liked the name. I get that a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's funny. Huh. Please, it's my father. Yeah, no, if these if these just just awful people are going to get my money, I'm going to need a maximum wolf, Wolverine guarantee. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, like That's actually that. an interesting, That's... like, matchmaking problem is could you design it so that... Um, you know, you, you kind of are the only version of your character that you ever see. It becomes a balancing problem, too. Like, mm. it just if this is an MMO, like, a bunch of Hulks, that can't be a good party. You know, you don't see, have Hulks that are cast in spells. <laughs> see, I, fe I feel like that that's maybe one of them where, like, I don't know, this probably won't work, but I feel like may maybe then just don't make the game hard. Like, I don't play a superhero game to be as as the hawk to be challenged. I yeah. play a superhero game as a as a hawk to smash. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like just I make like the, the game where having... where like six having six hawks is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of having a Hulk mage who gets angry when he can't cast spells and then just acts as a normal Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> Revert to regular Hulk. Yeah. yeah. That that would be interesting is like a gameplay mechanic of having to find reasons to get angry. Dennis, what does Steven say? Steven says, I have given no money to a free to play game, and I am infinitely happy with my purchase. So that's divide by zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose that, that it checks out. Um huh. So is he just not played a free to play game that uh that, that that gave him value? Or are we working on so kind of a definition of terms, are we talking about like a like a scummy Facebook free to play game or are we talking about something like like Marvel Heroes or whatever? Yeah, that's that, it's interesting. I did I did not specifically have like yeah. phone shakedown games in mind. Yeah. Um, but that's where everyone seems to have kind of gravitated. But there there, you know, people mention League of Legends and stuff later on. So Yeah. Um but yeah, that's uh I, I assume he means none. Well, none to any kind, I guess. Which yeah. is, I, I wonder what percent of people have never given any money. I'll have yeah. to. I will do the math on our answers because I think there's a couple people who have said never. With as, <laughs> with as popular as uh, popular as Hearthstone is in general, and also within our listenership, I'm surprised um, nobody's come in here and talked about their uh, their crippling Hearthstone debt. So I oh yeah like yeah. Although there is lots of Hearthstone chat um, on this post. Mostly fueled by me. I am so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it and I was like, ah, I can't. I got to jump in. Yeah, we got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> can't resist the hearth chat. <laughs> yeah. So I, I feel like you've kind of got a situation where it's it's sort of like MMOs where like technically MMOs just, you know, just means a game with, you know, like, you know, persistent world, lots of players. But it also means a very specific genre, you know, level building, some grinding gear is important. Yeah. And I feel like you have the same thing with free to play where like technically, you know, Kingdom of Loathing and Hearthstone and stuff like that, free to play, but they're not the free to play genre. Hmm. Yeah. They, they do not have at least seven different variants of currency available. <laughs> right actually i think kingdom of loathing does but <laughs> well yeah the, 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 there's meat and i forget what the other one is but like that is uh it's 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 impossible to do that you have to you have to segregate the pay and the and, and the non-pay currency otherwise it ruins the economy right yeah yeah. Oh, yeah yeah no i'm joking okay cool i just i just want to make I, sure i meant i meant more literally just in terms of like the random uh the random game uh like engines mm. they've uh or like gameplay elements they've <laughs> and over the year, they've just had a lot of like weird areas where it's like this area uses mm, Starbucks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know, to to buy your coffee empire. 
yeah, you know, to buy your stars. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kilo writes in saying, I decided to toss some real money at order and chaos duels, uh, just to see if it was better than buying real packs of cards. It was not. So I tried to look up what order and chaos duels is and, uh, uh I, I edited it out, but this is a site that auto plays music. <laughs> so I can't actually see what this is. Um, but the, hmm. the Google you're, image you're makes it look on like a, a chaos day. I suppose <laughs> Google image oh, no, makes it. it makes it makes it look like a like a Hearthstone ripoff, like a Hearthstone or Magic, um, like kind of game, like a yeah, like a TCG card game. Yeah. So but I don't... yeah, making we'll talk about it more in a little bit. But making the leap to buy a random pack is is almost impossible for me to do. Like yeah. that just that is just unfathomable, unfathomable to me. What's the alternative? Um, paying for known content. So oh, you can I do that. Put in, Yes. I, it, well, in, in certain ways. And like I said, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that for sure. Yeah. Right now. But like, I could see like, as opposed to just like hitting a button to buy a random pack saying, I will spend $5 a week on random Hearthstone cards. Like give me, give me two packs um, of, of, of Hearthstone cards every week and give me one on, on Monday and one on Thursday. Got um, two pack a week. Uh, I have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> as well, but just like as a subscription plan, right? Like I like this game. I will pay $20 a month to play this. Um, I'm not going to I, individually buy that. What I want to see that. is here is here is a complete viable deck. So mm-hmm. here's 30 cards that kind of work together well and you can you can play and have fun with this and be reasonably competitive. And I will give you $30 for that entire set of cards. And it's got like maybe one or two legendary cards that are super rare in it. Um, in kind of a balance of other cards. That's that's what I would want. The whole, I'll give you $5 a week, there's that piece of my brain that's like, but what if I get the exact same five cards over and over? It's theoretically possible. It's going to be horrible. It's going to happen. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, it's I kind of scuzzy. Buy. How many it players seems, do they have? Lots. It's, it seems like it's a company decision where they're they're choosing something where there's potential for really high profit. Because if you do a random one over and over again, like... There's there's a higher ceiling than if you do a one time buy. Yep. Although yeah. I do the the reason I was ask is I do feel like that would be the one problem with like a game that has that many players is like I I, I remember on um oh um Starbound you know at at some point there's like you know you have to kill a certain enemy to and get a specific drop to advance. And, you know, someone did the number and with, you know, the number of people playing, at least one person statistically would have to play for like months before they could advance. Good God. <laughs> oh, or, so, you know, it was something like that. And and just because, you know, when you have millions of people playing. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like you would have some of that, which is like statistically enough people have to be buying these that at least someone that's really happened to. Hmm. Yeah, someone has someone has opened identical packs of like Nat Pagel and uh, other horrible legendaries just like three times over. <laughs> it's the only one they can get. Yeah, somebody in some far flung corner of the universe is just keeps flipping heads. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, uh, Ben. Or sorry, no, David. What does Ali say? Ali says I don't play a lot of games on mobile, so wasn't really aware this was a thing till recently. Yes, I'm a little behind the times. But recently, I played a bit of Angry Birds and couldn't get over how pervasive the ads are to get that little bit of extra help. Ouch. I can see how easy it would be to put money in to get that advantage. Yeah, especially if you don't have the antibodies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, how does that work in Angry Birds? Like, do they offer to, like, have auto-aim or something? Uh, like, or special, is- special ammunition, stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a little gross. Like, I don't mind paying for extra levels. Like, you know, Hitman, Hitman Go, where you just buy the Blood Money pack. That's great. Mm -hmm. Uh, If Hitman was like, hey, pay some money to make this guard have to go to the restroom, that'd be Uh, shitty. (laughs) I I don't know, actually. I I kind of feel like I would pay to just have the power to, like. Oh, I'm. (laughs) So, wait, is there a mechanic in the actual Hitman games where you can bribe a guard? No, I don't think so. No. You can bribe them no, with fiber but, wire. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'd probably pay once just to see what the little board game piece looked like when he was pissing, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, uh it, it does get gross when it's like, hey, pay to win. 
Yeah. But now I sound like somebody who's, uh, so now I sound like a Steam review. Uh, <laughs> let's hear, uh, Ben, what does Robin say? Robin says, I just spent $40 on fin- Final Fantasy Record Keeper and I didn't even blink. I don't even want to think about how much I've spent over the past year. It's absolutely possible to play it as a pure free-to-play user, uh, and it's probably the most generous phone game in terms of free currency, but it's easy to get drawn into equipment for a favorite character, and the $1 equipment discount draws uh, add up a lot over time. I need to play Record Keeper. Like now that I have or the- you don't need to play it, according to this comment. <laughs> I suppose. I suppose. No, I'm just uh, like I, I've I've had it and it looks cool. Like I like the idea of playing as pixel art representations of these uh, of these beloved Final Fantasy characters. Um, I don't know. Like I I have a renewed enthusiasm for uh for iOS gaming now that I have my new iPad. Wait, aren't all Final Fantasy characters through six pixel art? Yes. So yeah, I mean, are all the beloved ones pretty much? Well, no, you got Cloud, you got, uh, you got, you I got. Thought he uh, was pix- pixelated. No, no, he's polygonal. I mean, it's all pixels because it's on a screen. But uh, I, I guess, <laughs> I guess that was just my shitty computer at the time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they got like the like the the, the light. I like I like the lightning sprite. She's cute with with her little pink hair. You know, like it's it, it looks pretty cool. And I'm 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 kind of down. Like that is a that is a good way to experience turn based combat. <laughs> so, hmm. Uh, Let's see here. Dennis, read Christopher and then read Kyle. Yeah. So Chris just says none. (laughs) I just picture him like hopping onto a passing train. (laughs) (laughs) Or riding away on a jet ski. Taking his helicopter away. (laughs) Damn that rope ladder. All the free to plays are shaking their fists at him as he disappears into a speck on the horizon. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> then Kyle says, um, I've been playing League of Legends for three and a half years now. They recently made it easily available to check how much you have spent on the game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I checked and have spent $415 on this free-to-play game. I'm not proud of it, but I haven't purchased many games over the years. Um, or Sorry, over those three and a half years other than the Dark Souls releases and Humble Bundles. Mm-hmm. Am I happy with my purchase? Kind of. I only bought things when they were on sale and haven't spent a single cent in this last year, thankfully. I've just started getting into Hearthstone, and I'm hoping to stay free to play there. Anyone know if it's possible? And then that's what led me down my rabbit hole (laughs) on Hearthstone. But I have also recently gotten into League, um, not spent any money on it yet. Yeah. But um, easily understandable how you could. So for League of Legends, you can just pay to unlock heroes or uh, costumes, right? Yeah, kind of. So there's there's a bunch of different things you can put special skins on. Um, oh, okay. Every every hero is available with in-game currency. Hmm. Um, and until very recently, the only way you could get skins was by purchasing them. But there's uh, no like like you know plus one megaphones of uh, speakeasy. No, there's nothing that would unbalance the game. I mean, that that game that is a game that is obsessed with balance, and because you know it's it's turned into such a huge esport, so I don't think they will ever do anything that um, could could even come close to pay to win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, but like I said, re- so recently they've made it theoretically possible to get skins without paying, but it's a very convoluted. Uh, scummy free-to-play style system that I think most people will just avoid. Ah, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, let's see. I'm going to read one here, and this is going to be the last of them um, here from, from the listeners. But Jonathan writes, um, I put some money into Hearthstone to buy solo adventures, uh, which give guaranteed unique cards and content. Feel, I feel pretty good about it uh, when I couple that with how much time I put into the game as a whole. And so, like, responding to that and also to Kyle's response, I'm like, okay, so over three and a half years, I've spent uh, some $415. Like, if I look at how many games I've bought, like, 415 over three and a half years, that's, like, to say it's a drop in the bucket is probably a little bit of an over, like, an an overstatement. That's a bit Mm -hmm. extreme. But, like, that's an okay deal if that's the majority of your of, of of your game time i think well yeah, i mean yeah if, if we if we extended that to um you know to four years that's approximately uh you know uh, a, a full price game a year yeah i mean that's not bad yeah and so like if you're buying a full a full price game every month 
you know, over the course of, over the course of, you know, three and a half years and you're spending $2,500, you know? So like that is, it's just, it's funny when you look at that and like, okay, it's one single game, but it's one you play forever. Well, and that's, and that was the comment I was going to make is it's, it's effectively not even the same game. Right. Like, um, it's, it's the same holder. It's the same framework. Um, but all the new introductions that happen and, and same goes for Hearthstone, um, effectively make the the things that you're seeing the strategies that you're using just the game that you're playing essentially vastly different yeah i just did the calculation if you're paying for a wow subscription over the course of uh like uh, monthly for uh for three and a half years that's 630 bucks yeah i'm trying to think like how much i've spent on wow now because i've i think i've bought three three expansions for full price and I've been off and on active since the start, so yeah, I've, I've definitely, yeah, I've definitely gone at it, least that much. It wouldn't, it like, it wouldn't be uh, an exaggeration to say you've probably put a thousand dollars in the WoW. I very well could have. Yeah, yeah. So, I just want to chime in and say I've got a hundred hours plus on Rocket League, twenty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ben, you'll outlive us all. <laughs> <laughs> Oh gosh. Uh so let's do ours here, kind of rapid fire. I uh mine's kind of boring. I love Super Stickman Golf. Uh so when Super Stickman Golf 2 came out on the free to play model, I just went ahead and bought twenty dollars worth of the in game currency, dropped all of it into the gumball machine, got some cool hats, and I was happy with it because I paid these delightful people twenty dollars for this game that I love. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I uh I've bought it similar to uh Jonathan. Um, I've, I've bought an expansion for Hearthstone, which, um, was known content through and through. Uh, I will also, also say I bought three previous expansions purely with gold, right? The two previous expansions (laughs) purely with like in-game currency. So no, no money down. Um, and it just so happened that I was like, you know what? It's, I could grind this up and I would get the expansion, but at that point, like, like we talked about earlier, it's a donation in my mind. I've um I've spent um at least some money on uh Fallen London. Um I've I've unlocked uh a couple of their like uh exclusive side stories and then I think I did one or two months of um ex- uh expansion, although some of that was like free in game currency, so I'm not sure exactly how much I've done. Excuse me while I join the Christopher Schley Club and hop into my helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Hop, hop into your 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 rocket car, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Golden rocket car. Nice. Huh. Well, thank you everybody for uh, writing in with your responses. If you want to participate in these, go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and the prompts go up usually on Tuesday afternoons or Tuesday evenings. <laughs> The grind. Now it is time for the grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the past, uh, let's say, week or so. Uh, does anybody have a new game they want to uh, to bring to the uh, to the table? I have two actually, and I'm really excited about them. So, go ahead. I will. Yeah, I will jump in. Um, the first game I completely stumbled upon, uh, just because it was part of PlayStation Plus. It was part of March's bundle, and I, I didn't even get to it, and then. It was just like randomly, I, I couldn't fit Hell Divers onto my Vita, um, you know, because I was going to give that a second chance, uh, but it didn't have enough space to download it. So I was like, "Oh well, this will be my consolation prize," and it's freaking awesome. Um, it's a game called Flame Over, which is the most dad jokey name uh, in existence because you play as a fireman who runs around buildings and uh, and puts out fires. <laughs> um, but this. This game is Spelunky wearing a twin stick shooter costume and, uh, you know, engulfed in flames. And it is a really, <laughs> really, really fun game. Huh. Okay. So quantify, quantify the, 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 the Spelunky aspect of it. Yeah. Five. So it's a, it, it is a roguelike. <laughs> I know it's a bit of a dirty word around here, um, <laughs> but it's, it's a roguelike in that, you know, you, you start from the beginning every time with, you know, no powers or whatever. I kind of have to start from scratch. The levels are randomly laid out and kind of as you progress, you buy items that you find, you know, throughout the throughout the game. So traditional roguelike, it's an isometric kind of view um, and you're basically going room to room. And every time you kick open a door, 
um, the room is on fire in some way in front of you. And again, it's all it's all a random layout. So you kind of see similar rooms, but you never know what order they're going to show up in or um, you know exactly what's going to be behind that door. And that's that's a huge rush because you have to kind of take in in a second. Okay, what room is this? Which angle am I coming at it from? What's on fire in this room? And then how do I proceed putting out the fire and rescuing the people inside as quickly as possible? Okay. That's and bad. and that is just that that is an insanely uh, tight loop of intense fun that just happens over and over and over again because every time you kick open that door, you're you're kind of taking a gamble and you have to do this really quick response to to what's in front of you. Just like uh, when you kick open a door in real life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You never know what you're gonna find. That's what Forrest Gump said, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. So at, at as he kicked in a door. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Jet, eh? <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolates. Bah! Why'd you kick that box on of fire. chocolates across the room? It's always on fire. <laughs> um. But then you know. So at the at the beginning of a level, you can see the map and how the floors are laid out. Um. And you you kind of plan your your route through. Uh. You're managing two assets. The first is your hose. Um, which has a longer range, um, but um, does not as permanently put things out. Okay. Uh, and then you have your extinguisher, which has a shorter range, but is kind of tampers things down more, makes it harder for them to catch back on fire. Okay. Um, and so you kind of have to, you, you know, you're, you're on a gauge for both of those that drains as you use them. Um, and then there are fixed points throughout the level where you can refill those. And again, that's, that's all randomly generated. Yeah. So you kind of, you jump into a level, you're on a timer, um, uh, that doesn't start until you go through the first door. So you can kind of take a breath, look at the layout and go, okay, I think I'm going to head this way first. And then over here. Okay, good. And then it's, it's kind of go in that micro loop of new room. Got to put everything out. I manage the chaos. The fire spreading over here. You know, you'll dodge a fireball, continue putting out the fire in the room and be like, oh crap, that fireball sailed over my shoulder and into the room that I just finished putting out. I need to decide whether to finish putting out the room I'm in or run back into the, the original room to stop that from spreading. Uh, and so there's there's a lot of like, uh, I don't want to call it panicked, but intense decision making that goes on as you're trying to manage this fire and keep it from getting out of control. Hmm. Um, that sounds and, like, uh, you ever played the board game, uh, was it Flashpoint or whatever? Or... Uh, no, I don't think I've played. I've heard of it. It's, yeah. a, it's a firefighting game as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And kind of, kind of sounds a little similar. That sounds yeah. cool. So, so, it, so it cribs a lot from Spelunky. Down to like when you run out of time, there is the the ghost that chases you around to kill you. <laughs> it's the ghost of the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, ghost house! All the people and, you failed to save. <laughs> so that you know, at, at first brush, it's like, oh, this is spelunky shovelware. Um, but I think the main thing that sets it apart is that it is way more mechanically fun to play. So spelunky is you know a really two D, uh, a really tight two D platformer. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's kind of a two D platformer like you've seen in everything else. This has the the kind of twin stick esque fire hose like you know usage. Lighter, it's not exactly lighter, a twin stick, kind of stick shooter, but that that is a lot more fun and interesting to control mm. than a spelunky. Um, so, and so for, kind of you've got the the moment to moment, uh, which just feels good con to control and feels good strategically because you're making all these decisions um, that just makes for a really, really fun game. So for a lot of people, the precision of Spelunky is, is, is part of the draw, um, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of that, that that same old is is accompanied by this real sense of like, I know what's going to happen with every with every input. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I can see that. Like, so, so the split comparison feels a little bit fraught because so much of what makes that game really, really interesting is not so much the roguelike aspect or, you know, kind of the time limit, but just the way that the different systems interact, um, you know, different, mm -hmm. different items with different, different enemies with, uh, kind of different environments and different hazards, all of those kind of just kind of like interlock in these really unexpected ways that even though you know what your input is going to output, you don't know how that's going to interact with these other systems kind of just, uh, kind of fucking around. It's got you. a very strong butterfly effect. Right, right. Does this, does, does, does this have any of that? Do you just have these two kind of these two verbs? Are there power ups? Is there anything more? Because like when I think of a firefighting game, I almost think of like loading up a pic, like flame.jpg in Photoshop and then just erasing <laughs> all of it. <laughs> <laughs> like is is there anything more to this than just make all make all orange go away um it is definitely simpler so there are power-ups but what i would say is spelunky 
you know, it, a, a good run or not is very heavily dependent on what items you find early. And, you know, a good a good player can make a good run out of bad items, yes. Um, but in, in I, I would say, you know, in Spelunky, maybe the items that you get are 70%, <clears throat> excuse me, 70% of your experience, uh, and then kind of what you make of them is the remaining 30%. Whereas I would say in in Flame Over, seventy percent is kind of the base stuff, and then the items are kind of the the icing on top. That remaining thirty percent. Okay. So you're not going to be made or broken by what you find in an item shop in Flame Over. Mm. Whereas I feel like you know you find the jetpack early on in Spelunky, and it's like ah, oh, I'm set. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's the trade off. Is I think Spelunky is a lot more systems intensive, whereas Flame Over is a lot more. Um, kind of the moment to moment gameplay intensive. Yeah. But I would say there is also that element of precision though, because it feels really good when you kind of burst into a room and you say, okay, I've seen this before. I know where I am. And you can like take down the fire in a real quick sweep. Mm. Um, there is an element of mastery there that feels really good. Yeah. Huh. Um, I, I would say it's also interesting. The other thought I had on it was um, you can use your life as a resource almost. Can, can you put out the fire with your blood? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because if you're achieving any kind of spray, I've got some medication to recommend <laughs> for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I ascribe to the Kill Bill style of uh, of blood pressure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, so, so as you stand close to flames, there's kind of a meter that goes up um, around your character, uh, and you you lose a heart if that meter goes all the way up to full. That said, if you once the meter hits full, there's kind of a reset timer where the meter disappears and you're effectively invincible um, where you're not taking any more damage before the meter for the next heart fills up again. Mm. So there can come a point when you're when you're playing the game that it's just like, okay, this fire is so big and so intense or whatever that it's better for me to just charge in, stand at the center of it and put everything out from a strong position and lose the heart than it is to try to dance around this thing from the corners for five minutes trying to put it out because that's just going to take forever and I don't have that much time. So, so, you're, so you sacrifice the small thing in order to get those iframes? Uh, basically, yeah. <laughs> so whereas Spelunky, I feel like, you know, losing a heart is always bad. Like there's never a situation where you would say I'm going to intentionally lose a little bit of life. Um, that is a trade-off that you can make in Flame Over. Yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. So that's that's a flame over. Any questions or things that I missed? That's so you got that on PSN. It's also on Steam. It appears so. Oh, good. Yeah. I I, I guess I would control OK with a mouse. Yeah. Oh, or I mean a controller, obviously. <laughs> yes. Oh gosh. Uh, it, so I I never have a controller synced up to my computer. So I, anything on a computer is is played with a mouse and keyboard in my mind. That's what. Yeah. It's just a, you don't yeah, you don't. You're you're a good person. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other game that I played is uh, Feria, which is a card slash board game um, that was suggested to me by um, Yes Okay Fine on mm. on the Slack. I don't know his actual name, um, but uh, it's it came up in the Hearthstone thread because there's a lot of people who like computer collectible card games, and um, it's really really interesting. Can you uh, um, can you spell that for me? Yeah, F A E R I A Feria, or Feria, or you know however you want to say Feria. Yeah. <laughs> um, but basically, like I said, the big shtick is that you are kind of playing a board game in addition to playing cards. Um, so it's kind of like Settlers of Catan and, and Hearthstone had a baby. Um, and, and it was part cheap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so I, I, li I like this art style a lot. Yeah, it is kind of a cool art style. Um, and it's, you know, a lot of it's placeholder cause it's, it's in early access right now. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like real painterly kind of thing. I don't normally associate that with, uh, with hex kind of stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. And it, it'll be interesting to see, you know, what refinements will get put on top of it as it goes. Cause they, they, they specifically talk about, Hey, a lot of this is placeholder. It'll get better. And it's like, well, some of this is pretty good right now. <laughs> um, although I thought the game was just God awful, but ugly when I, when I pulled it up the first time. Um, and I was like, what? No, like, it's not really pixel art, but it's just everything feels distorted. And then I realized I was playing in the wrong screen resolution. Uh -oh. So shame on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but the idea is that every turn, um, you know, you're able to play cards, but you're also able to put down tokens onto a game board um, that effectively are your lands. And whereas lands, uh, you know, in, in like Magic the Gathering are just kind of a resource, these are actually extant. They occupy a physical space. 
Um, and then once you play your creature onto those, the creatures move around and it functions much like a game of, you know, chess or any other board game, um, which is really interesting and complex and deep. Um, and it feels my thought on it was it feels really good to be immersed in a system that I don't fully understand. Right. Um, you know, playing a lot of Hearthstone, you kind of it's codified a little bit now. Like you kind of, you know what the decks are going to be like, you know how everything works. And so to just kind of step into this and be like, I don't know if what I, the cards I'm playing are make sense together. It's just, you know, they seem kind of fun. And <laughs> you know, I don't know if I'm making the strategically right decision and to get the feeling that like, you know, everyone that's playing, cause it's so new is, is in that same place. Uh, that's just really fun and exciting. It feels, it feels wildly unpredictable. Um, and, and that's, that's a lot of fun. Can you, can you control the monsters once you place them on the land or are they autonomous and they just kind of go off on their own? You can, no, you, you control them. And so, you know, you, you play it onto a land that you own. Okay. Um, and then from there, most monsters are able to move one space and attack in one direction per turn. Um, although there are some monsters that can move multiple spaces. There are some monsters that can move where there is not land. And, and you know, it's, it's a whole thing. Again, that, that adds to the complexity and the, and the strategies that you can get. Um, but it just, it feels really good to be kind of constantly discovering how different cards or creatures or combinations work together. Um, and to kind of be puzzling that out as you play has been, has been a lot of fun. Hmm. Oh, nice. Uh, you're, so you're playing this on steam. I am. Okay. Yep. I think that, so th this is going to be like an unofficial recommendation for you. And I, I can't tell you how to use your time. If mm -hmm. this game is this young, you could actually probably get it on the ground floor of a, uh, the ground floor of a streaming community for this. Oh, believe me, I've I've thought about that for sure. Um, so I haven't I haven't streamed it yet. I just finished doing all like the solo content. Um, mm -hmm. but I'll I'll definitely be playing it more. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, yeah. So so keep an eye out for that on the streams. It, it will be in my stream at some point. Um, and it, it certainly is uh different than what I've seen before from other card games, specifically because of this kind of board game after the card game aspect yeah huh well that's really cool yeah i don't know that i have any questions about that yeah feels feels good to be in this kind of honeymoon phase with the game um, <laughs> it's it's a shame that that has to be temporary yeah it really is i mean in, in the way that you keep that from being temporary is you add just ungodly amounts of card expansions right which is also you know <laughs> a problem so it's i mean it's it, it's it's a strategy and like it could could or could not be a problem but like when you know if 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 a game like this achieves any any kind of success see also hearthstone they will it doesn't matter how much new and novel and inventive great stuff people they they, they put in people are going to get used to it immediately like it's going to be codified just because you have thousands if not millions of people playing it yeah, um, because wikipedia is a thing yeah or although, just any, any kind of wiki yeah although i think at least with like magic the gathering it's pretty impressive the degree to which people build just weird crazy decks that work like dennis you saw that on duck spring though like you were you were winning on turn three with the transformation deck yeah it was ridiculous like and i, I think it was just people were weirded out and assumed <laughs> that what i had must be this like powerful new deck that no one had heard of before that's going to destroy them instead of just <laughs> crazy stupid <laughs> when, so, when i was watching you actually warped reality by the power of <laughs> when, yeah. I, when i was watching people were incredulous like you got to level 14 with that deck like they couldn't accept it and like yeah, no matter so how much you said like hey this is a game this, no matter how much you said this is a gimmick deck like they just didn't yeah. there's like wait wait a minute, 14 what <laughs> yeah it was uh i was i was very happy with how it performed um but it, it, by the same token like yeah it, that was fun I, I went back and played it a little after the stream and just got annihilated yeah. so i think reality set in a little bit oh well, yeah um and it's it's a lot of fun in, in feria to be in like i i haven't gone and looked for the the net decks for feria um but hopefully they just don't exist yet and everyone's figuring it out yeah um it's a small player base i noticed i, I played four actual competitive games um and two of them were kind of queuing in against the same person uh, twice in a row. Uh, so it tells me there aren't a ton of people playing, but I'd love to see it take off just because it's such an interesting idea. Yeah. Well, that's really cool. Hey. Keep me keep me updated because uh, like this this sounds like it is just new enough that uh, like this isn't ground floor kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's my mentality. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Uh, anybody have anything new in addition to that? 
Anybody have anything old? I got old hey, stuff. Go. <laughs> David, go ahead. Sure. Uh, so, uh, been playing a little bit more of uh, the division. Um, over overall, still, you know, still the same thing. Although, I, I have kind of come to the conclusion. I feel like one of the things I like about this game is that it's kind of figured out that um, that massively multiplayer games, like actually massively multiplayer, actually isn't that great of an idea. It's more. Uh, uh, it's more. It has more in common with uh, Diablo, right? Right. Well, but what what I mean is, like, I feel like one of the big problems with like MMOs is that most stories don't actually make sense to have like hundreds of people. Okay. So, like, if you're you know if you're you know theoretically, you know, going through the deepest darkest parts, you know, parts of Mordor or whatever, like it doesn't make sense for there to be more than like you and your party running around. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I feel like this this kind of setup of uh you know every everything's instance except for like in this case safe houses or or you know an equivalent game maybe towns I feel like actually is kind of more true to how MMO should feel. Yeah, just like that everything is just kind of like incident as opposed to authored. Right. Yeah. yeah. I I think I think what it is is I think. I, I would almost say I don't think people really want massively multiplayer games. I think they really want living worlds. Okay. A lot of the time. What's uh like? What do you see as the distinction? I I would say one one is defined as just like having tons of players like running around at all times, whereas the other being um, you know the the ability to uh you know interact with um other other play large amounts of other players does that make sense i think so 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 i i know that that that's uh that's kind of my only insight really to uh the division right now like it's it's continues to be fun but not nothing really earth shattering yeah. um really come kind of have continued to play uh salt and sanctuary and got a lot farther okay so um i i beat the first boss and then um did you go to smile town or whatever yes yes <laughs> yes and that, that's where i stopped tonight actually that's the only game i've been playing uh for, okay. for, for the show okay. so yeah yeah so um yeah smile town is kind of weird <laughs> sounds creepy <laughs> it's like yeah the the name the name of it's kind of weird i'll be curious to see what the lore reason is for that exactly exactly because like this doesn't yeah, because I mean, it's it's as as you probably imagine from like pretty much any game, but especially ones that souls like like it it is not a smiley town. Right. I think that maybe it's a play on like Blight Town. On which? On 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 Blight Town, an area from Dark Souls One. Yeah, yeah. It definitely seems seems to me like to kind of be in terms of like what's inspired by it. I have have you gotten far enough to have like a random weird thing of dialogue? No, no, like nobody's like yelled out at me or anything. Okay, okay, yeah. If eventually they're like, there is a thing. I have no idea. Uh but yeah. Um. So I've gone to that, and then it. Um. That also seems to be the part of the game where it sort of uh does the uh, Dark Souls spaghettiing into there being like multiple paths. Yeah, because you can go you can go east, right? Like there's an NPC who says, like, yeah, my quest is to get into this place, but there are the all these like different path like paths into it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So like the the other setting is like a wood setting that um seems to really trade on uh poison effects. Yeah. And uh fall damage. Mm -hmm. Because you're like platforming through trees and stuff. So um I don't know uh overall I'm I'm liking it a lot better um I do feel like I feel like gameplay wise it it seems a lot more Castlevania than uh uh than Soul series to me it's like it's like Castlevania with a stamina system right well I I, I guess I think it seems to me it it doesn't have kind of the the um hard-edged um 
you know, re kind of requirements of like, you know, you know like in, in the in the dark in the Soul series, basically, if you ever get hit, that's kind of a problem. Yeah. You know, whereas in this, it seems much more like the Castlevania series where where like you are going to like in a, in many fights take like incidental hits it's it's kind of funny right because because like this does have like a like a uh stam not stamina uh like, like, like a uh poise kind of system sure uh built yeah. into a stability and poise um which is which is funny because that's not a castlevania thing but like attack interrupts are definitely a factor i kind of wonder um, if that's going to become more of a thing later on, especially because, you know, we're both so early. I've I've proceeded through this game at a snail's pace just because sure. of other obligations. Um, but I just I kind of wonder if that's going to be a thing. See, what uh, what primary weapon are you using? I'm using like a like a big sword. I don't know if it's a great okay. sword or anything. Yeah. So because I, I um, I'm using a uh, uh, dagger. Okay. And so like I've actually not noticed the um the poise system at all. Hmm. But I think probably you know, probably some of that is just, you know, da I'm assuming daggers just have like crazy low poise and so probably everything gets interrupted. Yeah. Uh but but also like a lot of my approach to combat is like use utilizing the jump attacks to like um to basically kind of bypass a lot of the enemies like block mechanics and stuff. Yeah. So, so which, which I, th I think that's a good thing, you know, you know, different weapons kind of leading to different approaches to things, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty interesting. So, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I've really enjoyed it. I, I really, I, I like, uh, I kind of like the, the saw as, as a, um, I don't know. They, I remember in high school, I read, uh, what it was the, the, uh, annotated, uh, Dragonlance. And there's like a passage where he just like goes on for like a page about how awesome Obsidian is just as like the imagery you can do of it. And just, you know, just like it really, you know, really works for like making, you know, you know, making things image you know, you know what i'm saying uh the author like using yeah, obsidian for uh, not, not just like a character saying boy i can really no, I'm, i can I'm carve sorry. some I'm cool sorry. stuff into some obsidian <laughs> i'm sorry yes yeah. uh this uh yeah you know this this is the the version of the book that has like random author comments on like why he wrote things the way he does and so he just talks about how like obsidian is basically the perfect thing to like when you when you don't know what to <laughs> make something out of in a fantasy setting and it needs to be vaguely badass make it have obsidian is that the story <laughs> behind 2001 then yes, yes. all right <laughs> so i i feel like there's a little bit of a similar thing in that like i just kind of like the imagery and like the stuff they get out of like the uh kind of salt motif yeah well the fact that it's like it's like seaside too you know yeah yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping they keep with that mm-hmm um, I have noticed, um, I don't know how much the beast area you've read or whatever. Um, apparently like they're going with their, their name for like giant monsters is Kraken. Hmm. So like, hmm. so like the, the first Cthulhu thing, um, thing you face is referred to as like a species of Kraken. And later on you see like an ogre or something that they refer to as being a type of Kraken. Yeah. So like, yeah, I, I kind of, I really like, uh, I don't know, kind of the world building y thing they're doing with that. Yeah, just the, like that that they've like they're they're playing on that register with the nautical right, kind exactly. of side of it. It could be it could be going with uh with uh Dishonored and being the return of whale punk. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So. It's 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 fun. I, I I'm curious about it. I feel kind of remiss in having not played more of it than I than I have. But uh, you know, you can only you can only feel so anguished about that. <laughs> Yeah, and I feel like I I don't know I I think the Source series in general I think particularly this one are kind of slow burn games, or at least they are for me because I'm awful at them. But yeah, huh? Well, we'll see. Yeah, that's uh, is is that all you've played? 
Uh, yeah, that's all I've played. Yeah. And that is that is all I've played. Aside from like Warcraft Three, but <laughs> so so much Warcraft Three that, that my wrist hurts, and I feel like I made a terrible mistake. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm I'm kind of trying to cool it on mousing. Um, <laughs> right now just because no more mousing, please please no yeah no using 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 the old tablet not um, the mice <laughs> oh gosh but uh but yeah so just uh just salt and sanctuary i still still like it it's it's, it's still real real cool but uh we're gonna get the real thing here soon <laughs> oh crusty's gonna get here i've got the countdown on my <laughs> ps4 by the real things you mean uh oh what was it uh slashy souls yes Glad ben. we cleared that up. <laughs> uh, I don't have much. I've continued playing the three games I've been playing. Played Knights of the Republic. Got to the last planet. Got stuck. Need to look up a walkthrough to figure out how to get unstuck. Not because of like a puzzle or anything. I don't know if I broke the game or not. Because I can't find something to progress the mission. And it's a short map. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I've also played a little bit more Stardew Valley. I'm kind of cooling off on that one. Don't know if I'm going to see it through to the end. Um, it kind of opened up. And part of uh, extending throughout the game includes like collecting different items from every different season. So it seems like it, a built in mechanic is playing it for a long time. Yeah. So hmm. I don't don't know if I like that or not. Um, that is uh, that's like a Harvest Moon thing, though. OK. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't excuse it, but it, uh, that's, uh, that's yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying it's like a bad game because of it or anything. I'm just saying that I might not want to play it because of that. Yeah. Um, so it's totally preferential, but I mean, you know, it's, I I can see the appeal of it. Um, I just don't know if it'll, it'll have legs for me or not. And of course I've continued playing rocket league and rocket league is pretty awesome. So that's it. Yeah. Huh. I don't know that I have any questions. We've talked about all those before. I just a quick question. Does rocket league have any kind of comprehensive like ranking system or, or. It does, but it's not like that important. Um, like you, people have names, uh, like ranks attached to their names. So like when you're playing someone, it'll say like veteran, semi-pro, pro. Uh, <laughs> I think Rocketeer is one of the highest ranks, and I played one Rocketeer at one point in time. But uh, Rocketeer yeah. or Rocketeer, like the like the '90s movie. I th- it like the '90s movie. Okay, yeah. great movie. Yeah. yeah, Howard Hughes was a villain in that. That was great. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought you was not a, pick up a hero. No, oh. I forget. I don't know. I thought he was a villain. <laughs> I could be wrong. It's been forever. Just remember that sweet helmet and that sweet jacket. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. So uh, I mean, here, here's a here's a question. Like, <laughs> so you the the majority of the time that you were playing that, you were actually playing it on a uh, um, kind of a suboptimal setup. You had the like a USB network adapter kind of thing, and that was that was really throttling you. Like, is the game like sure. is, is it? Does it feel like you're playing a different game? Has it come to life more? No, uh, I mean, so to be fair, the USB network adapter it worked for a little bit of time, but then started to not work. So it basically went back to pre not working usb network adapter so Mm. yeah so i mean it's just normal speed and a lot of it depends upon the server you connect to so some some servers might be slow and then some will be just normal speed so yeah yeah Hmm. Yeah. i see are you are you playing with like a like a a constant group of people is this appointment kind of place yeah it's basically how i keep friendships outside of the level uh, <laughs> so i play with one of my friends from cincinnati i play with one of my friends from las vegas so oh yeah yeah yep neat and i think at some point in time i would like to play with some of the people from the level since we have a slack channel for that i suppose we do don't we huh I'm yeah. trying to think. Um, I think I have this on PSN, but I don't know. They, they, they don't have cross crossplay from PSN to, to, to Steam, right? Yeah, I don't think so, but no. I don't know. It's I mean, it's not a huge deal to just buy it on PC. That's that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What are the uh, requirements on it? Like, I, I mean, I mean, r- roughly, I'm not I'm not saying like, like, <laughs> is it is it a high, re- high, uh, high requir- system requirements or pretty, pretty? Well, so my only basis of reference is I have a really old laptop and I have a new desktop. It plays on the new desktop. It does not play on the old laptop. So <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, take that for what you will. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it, it's uh, it plays really well on the PS4. Uh, let me see here. Oh, the minimum for this isn't bad. It's like two gig RAM. Uh, Nvidia like 
8800 so oh, okay. like you're fine uh if it's uh if it's if you have any kind of pc that was built in the past like three four years and even that's probably a stretch sure yeah they recommend like a like an nvidia 260 and that's that is like several um generations ago mm -hmm. yeah i could i could totally see this running on uh like i don't know like it doesn't talk about what kind of like if it uh, supports integrated graphics or not but this is it's it's a so to put this in perspective just so you know it is a direct x9 c game so uh, okay. yeah yeah so that says that says something about yeah. cool well it sounds like we've uh we've all been playing some stuff and it sounds like we're about done uh do you all want to button it up yes that sounds fine okay so thank you everybody for listening to this episode of the level uh level 145 it seems uh which is which is real cool uh we're gonna be back next week uh even though that is dark souls week because i'm gonna want to get on here and talk about some stuff and that'll be you need fun. a palate cleanser yeah yeah i need something to i need something to pull me away uh this is gonna be my third soul release that i played under the gun um and i think i've i've learned uh i think i've learned some lessons uh from the <laughs> from the previous two such as leave the house you dummy also <laughs> also make a fucking salad <laughs> just do it by under the gun we mean gary is actually threatening him with the gun the entire time <laughs> gary has no power over me it's me I, I, you know we gotta we gotta get out there for the school cool, is threatening no i like i gary, like the yeah. idea that like Gary is threatening him with a gun via FaceTime, and that's still yeah, the same exactly. effect. Just pointing it at the camera. Like, yeah. a, like a 1912 movie goer or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, this is why is this large man shooting me? Um, yeah. On the screen, in the silver screen. No. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be back next week. Uh, maybe a shorter episode. Who knows? Um, but uh, but yeah, it's totally going to be there. Uh, but you know the usual stuff. Go to uh, go to duckfeed.tv slash news to see all of kind of the hip happen and happenings going on. There was a change to the uh, to the Patreon that means uh, two new shows uh, at the premium level uh, for a bunch of people. Uh, we've got Try This, where Gary and I recommend culture to each other. And we just kind of talk about it for a minute or so. And then Adaptation Decay, where we talk about bad video game movies. Oh, there's yeah. plenty of those. Yeah. So those have like a, a, a an interesting release scheme. They come out every other month, uh, but uh, and they you know they alternate from each other. But we're very excited about that. And uh, I don't think I would be remiss to say uh, there's some really cool stuff coming down the line uh, for, uh, for for new stuff. We, we, we've talked about it obli obliquely, but like there mm -hmm. is uh, there is more on the way. Um, but yeah, the usual stuff for this particular show, not just those pie in the eye, broken promises that we're going to make, uh, like the Facebook, um, page where you can participate in the multiplayer, uh, leaving us a rating or review. It has been a while since we've gotten one of those and, uh, boy, it does help us out so much and, uh, just telling some friends and, yeah. uh, am I missing anything? I said, Oh, look, uh, I, I'll be, um, or I am green laser 73 on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Uh, so look for me streaming Faria. Nice. Um, and also look for me. Um, I'm going to try and get some until dawn in later this week. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Ben, I will text you when I know that's happening. Okay. Cool. Right. Cool. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for listening. I've been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. I've been David Mysmith at Mysmith777 on Twitter. And I've been Ben Merkel at Merkelizer on Twitter. And stick around for some titles. All right. Does anybody have uh, ones they want to throw in? Dark Souls Weave. <laughs> okay. Well, Dark Souls Weave was one. Um, the other one, oh, I got to pull out my notes. Uh, bribe them with fiber wire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I have that one stylized as fiber wire bribe. Uh, -huh. uh just, j just because that, uh, that had, that it's a little bit more assonant. Mm -hmm. Um, if you guys are, would allow that, uh, that, that indulgence. Um, let's see here. Uh, Ben, did you have anything else besides dark, besides dark souls weave? No, that's it. Okay. David. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, I had Dark Souls Weave, uh, Dark Souls Weave as well. Um, the many moods of Kratos. <laughs> um, maximum Wolverine guarantee. <laughs> It's a high quality title week. Yeah, I know, right? A tight loop of intense fun, hmm. uh, which is I, I, which is more of just a, a a a fun turn of phrase. Yeah, I I like the Wolverine one, and I like the fiber bribe one. I like fire wiber fire wire bribe, fiber wiber fiber F- fiber fiber wiber bribe. That's, yeah, Wait, that's definitely. Are, yeah. are we talking about like fire wire as in bribing them with Mac <laughs> products, or are we talking about fiber wire? As in, like, bribing yeah. them to death. <laughs> we're, la- yeah, no, we're to f- fiber, fiber, fiber wire bribe. That's yep. a that's a really fiber interesting twister. I like it a lot. Yeah, I like that. There we go. 